So here we are, the finale. Still got quite a lot to do, and uh, yeah, okay, special effects, bit of a misnomer to be honest. I haven't got any more descriptions for weathering. Okay, regardless, anyways, I was just going to sort of tell you because we had that break where we did the figures, uh, it's sometimes quite useful to make a list of these final steps that we need to do in order to finish the vehicle. Makes it might seem a bit strange if, if you've got it all together, don't worry. But like removing the masks, adding antennas if they're appropriate, uh, painting the tail lights. <laughs> Believe me, I've done it before. I think I finished the model and uh, no, I forgot to paint something up. It just sometimes helps to do that, anyways. We're gonna fire away. Let's get on with this. First thing we're gonna do is this tow cable that needs some detailing. I'm gonna use this Mr. Metal Collar, which is a uh, a metallic with some uh, pretty remarkable properties so let's go on with that right now so uh, this is a lacquer paint but it's in a metallic it's also buffable which is uh, quite unusual um, paint itself is uh, kind of thickish make sure you got your own uh, dedicated uh, metallic type brush. Uh, all we're going to do is paint this on the tow cable. And we're going to add some further effects afterwards. I'm going to show you how this all works. Anyway, just paint it all on. Make sure you don't get it anywhere else. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Okay, that's been applied, and this will actually buff up metallically just by polishing it with a brush or a cotton swab or even your finger so we're going to add that nice metallic gleam just by gently polishing it and this really does look like now steel cable instead of anything else and of course you can do this in uh, you can polish it really bright or leave it a little bit dull and then we can add a wash but you should be able to see that coming alive now so I'll get all that done and show you what that looks like you can see I've added also just some light chips, or like the metallic effects on the uh, eyelet for that cable as well. So you can polish this as much as you want or as little, and we'll probably go back and add some washes on that. But that's basically your tow cable finished. The next thing we'll do is these tail lights. Uh, we'll do a base, we're using this Molotow liquid chrome. Uh, point you note, the rear tail lights are bright red and the front ones are actually like an ivory type colour. Um, I'm just going to dot on a single uh, drop of chrome onto there, if I can do it. There we go. And then the other one, there's one on the turret as well. Turret one's just up there. So let me get you in focus. And just do one dot. There we go. Oops. Please focus. There you go. Chrome dot, and then we'll come back with the red in a second. Okay, complete the tail light. All we need is some uh, transparent red paint. There's various makes, doesn't really matter who it is. I'm just going to put a blob on the, pet, on the tail light. I'm going to show you how we do that. Let's try and get this in the focus for you. Hold on. No, 
that's done. Just do the other side. Just need to hit all these little details. Or okay, that's nice. I need to do the toilet one as well. Everything show you that one as well. Just a dot. There it is. Done. Okay, let's have the conversation about, uh, well, everybody calls it chipping. But uh, I disagree with that term, chipping, uh, chip metal. In some cases, yeah, you see it a lot on construction equipment. You see it on derelict vehicles. You don't see it on operational vehicles. Uh, to much extent there are some exceptions you will see it in some areas where paint actually does come off through wear which is the tracks or like heavy contact points but on operational vehicles you haven't got these deep chips except in some rare circumstances and uh, yeah I mean it does it looks good I mean don't get me wrong I mean if that's the way you want to paint your tanks and if you're not bothered about references or realism Go for massively heavy chipping effects on what you're going to call an operational vehicle and you're just in science fiction. That, that's my opinion on it. Now I don't say I disagree with it and also I don't say that I won't do it in the future but I think it's becoming too much of a benchmark to judge models by uh, your chips. I think that's uh, it's getting ridiculous to be honest. Um, I'm going to cut, well my terminology is, is like paint degradation and it's more on modern armour and I'm going to bring up some examples it's more like paint scratches um, and let's just have a look at a clip now okay maybe not the best example but this is a uh, BMD and it's uh, obviously a monument however it's in pretty good condition and uh, we can actually can see what the chips look like got a mixture of the underlying base coat and also you can see the bare steel very slight and um, this vehicle's outside and I don't see any big rust streaks on it or anything like that I just see some metallic chips and a mixture of the underlying paintwork because these may well be aluminium and they can actually some of the things are bound to be steel however no big rust streaks bear that in mind look at the tracks as well not rusted maybe slight rusting there we go there on that return roller and also on some of these road wheels but let's just bear that in mind as we do our weathering that it's not a piece of scrap metal okay so the traditional i mean you have actually got colours now that are chipping, chipping brown and uh, the good old favourite was the camo black brown as well. They do, honestly, they do come into use in some circumstances, but for what we're doing, which is going to be paint wear uh, scratches, we'll be using like green ochre, we're going to be looking for a lighter tone of the base um, colours as if they're scratched. Um, Iraqi sand is one of my favourites because you will get it down to the primer in some cases but we aren't going to be going down on these rusty metal chips uh, Sunny Skin Tone, another favourite of mine and this ivory sand that might work as well on the green and on the sand colour the other thing to consider as well is where these chips are going to be and uh, yeah, you need to think about the way that the crew would actually um, enter the vehicle where their contact points would be and also really think about the areas of exposure on the vehicle so you do get chipping around the side where you've got these sort of sharp points here uh, you may well get it you're going to get areas where there's a lot of maintenance which is you know possibly the engine deck in some cases uh, the other areas as well are where metal touches metal 
which would be in this case the gun cradle where the gun rests inside it and um, stone chips as well of course would affect the fenders as well so we're going to think a bit strategically about how we do that and uh, okay so what's the best terminology I think microchipping I think is the best way to put it we're going to be putting on the chips as small as possible so I'm going to show you how we do that okay so we've got some of the like paint wear type colours and these need to be diluted so I put three drops of water down and I'll just individually mix uh, these little portions you really you need a fine brush as well to do that that has to be emphasized as well and um, with chipping as well uh, you have to be careful with the application for them to look realistic the way I do them is that they're so small and minute that it's only after building up the effect that you'll be able to see them and uh, always make sure you offload your brush and check it you can see how small these are going to be so let's just take an area and just start hitting the edge that's probably the best place to start also another point of caution as well and uh, this is a serious one as well beware of the materials of the tank as in don't put down if you're going to go down these deep rusty scratches uh, best off not putting them on rubber skirts if you know what I mean and uh, we'll bear that in mind because we have got rubber skirts on this on this vehicle so I'm, I'm going to be a bit random on where I, uh, I go in with these chips and I might actually just create an area of focus instead of um, all over effects might just go in and just hit like one panel instead the light guards they tend to get a bit battered I'm just going to hit the edges that's the best way to start the other thing that helps as well as a flow improver or a not a flow improver of course that's, that's for glazes a retarder which slows down the drying time of the acrylic so you can get um, more working time if they get too big just flick them off that's what I do anyways Okay, I'm going to sort of continue because it takes quite a bit of concentration to do this. But uh, we'll build up the effects um, slowly. And we'll also use a mixture of colours from the palette to uh, create this effect. Okay, so I'm sort of into the process now. It is micro scratching. You can see, sort of front fenders have been concentrated on these zip boxes as well and I have started on the back deck as well a series of scratches on the back deck there's nothing deep um, this is quite similar to sort of figure painting uh, if you see on here it's a pretty good example these are pretty translucent layers of acrylic just create these scratches and then I've got a concentration at the front so we have got some damage at the front but this is the heaviest it's going to get and I will put a, uh, a steel chip into one area just to sort of show that maybe there's some maintenance or some corrosion did happen there but in terms of like a totally rusty vehicle that's just simply not going to be uh, what's been depicted here so um, what are your thoughts on this anyways I'd like to know that I really would okay let's continue we've also got the the whole to do and also the other point as well is um, the light chips which are sort of reflecting primer on the uh, green camo short pretty well how do you do the sand the sandy color and I think I might use this silver gray actually I'm going to try that experiment with that 
and see if I can build up some light chipping into that. And I'll check my references as well, see how sand coloured paint chips. It might be a different colour altogether, but it might not even show that effect. So we'll check that out as well. Okay, the other thing that I'm going to do and introduce is these uh, steel chips as well, or silver coloured chips, let's just call them that. These boxes here are aluminium, and I'll show you some references. They chip metallically, and um, instead of bright silver, I tend to use these uh, metal things and just jab on like a few. points, scratches, don't go massively overboard on it and don't hit everything but uh, it tends to do the trick, I'll only do it in a few places just to sort of demonstrate that but it just it is something that's uh, ignored nowadays Okay, so we've added those micro scratches, that's what I'm going to call them. Uh, the only other thing I've done is added a little tiny amounts of wear to the bottom of these skirts using tire black and a like, sponge. Sponge technique is everywhere. I'll explain to you if, uh, if you need that in a forthcoming video, but I um, just wanted to add a little bit of wear to depict basically wear and tear on the rubber portion of the um, of those side skirts. All the turrets all scratched up. Maybe I've overdone it a bit, who knows. Right, okay, you're gonna love this next bit. Especially if you were in the military, if you were in the British Army, uh, NATO Army, US Army, probably even in former uh, Warsaw Pact armies and the Russian Army, they're all the same, okay? And uh, speaking from personal experience, I was in operations in Bosnia, and even during that time, we did maintenance on the vehicles. No word of a lie. So we're under a situation of, uh, you know, operations, and we still do maintenance on our vehicles. And this is the sort of, uh, it's, I don't see it on, on uh, models, maybe, maybe somebody does it, but I've done it a few times. I've done it certainly on aircraft. But um, when we did this maintenance, as well, uh, 
many times we actually painted straight over the dirt and the rust because there was a necessity, there was some sort of inspection or something coming up and the way it was done was just using brushes, you know, there wasn't any spray equipment out there. Um, so you get this patch painting effect on the, on the vehicles where you've got fresh paint, even painting on top of dirt or whatever. So we're going to do a bit of that. Why not? I mean, it's, it's a technique that uh, I don't see anybody using. And there's a lot of people complaining about, you know, uh, uh, maintenance and bits and pieces. So why don't we depict that? And the way we're going to do it, we're going to use some um, Tamiya paint um, because it's got a texture to it. And also it's not very good at brush painting. So we'll actually see some brush strokes. And if we bear in mind that we'll, we'll be using like a 135th scale brush, uh, this is the way we're going to do it. So let's just get a little bit out of the top and the way to do it is either you can do little masks or a little but we want to just instead of painting we're just going to place our little squares on top of paint chips sort of like that that's a bit too much gosh that is not good that looks like a blob I want that to look like a square so I'll just correct that and then another here. Just these little. It's going to look a bit odd, I think. I've done this before on some some other models as well. Just as if it's been roughly painted, because uh, you know there isn't any spray shops out there, so you just. go with it and I chose this NATO green because it's going to be a lot brighter and um, that's what new paint looks like it's, it's actually darker than the faded paint because it's new I have to be careful I do not get a glossy finish that is a bit of a risk with with doing this but if we do we'll just um, go back and we'll just add a little bit of flat so we can just do little patches yeah this this time your paint's thick and it doesn't paint very well just like the paint we used in the army <laughs> some area you see what they'll do is they'll hit the areas that are subject to inspection and that's anything that's uh, mechanical don't overdo this because uh, it'll just it won't look right but the idea is that uh, you know it opens up your thinking, which is not a lot of people are doing that in modeling at the moment. Things have become a little bit too robotic, in my opinion. People are just doing the, like everybody else does it this way, so I do it this way, as if it's like a fad or a fashion. Do whatever you want, do what's right. Think about, explore your own ideas. I want to get an area that's like a little bit heavy. I want to just like just do little dots. I want to get I want to get an area where I thought I've gone a little bit overboard. Huh? Which is probably up there. The thing with these uh, scratches is though, is to really keep them small and tiny keep them in scale that's the whole thing so I'm just gonna go for a patch there and another patch there it should look a bit strange which is
the other way to do this as well, you can actually just uh, get a square piece of sponge and dab it on. But don't, uh, whatever you do, don't sort of start painting or else it, it won't look, it'll look a bit bizarre. Okay, I'll continue on with that and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay, that stage is complete. Keep it sort of, that's the secret to it. I'll sort of concentrate on this side here on that conduit as if they uh, had a lot of corrosion there. And then they got inspected, then they got bollocked, and then they had to make it right. And they didn't have much time to do it, so they just slapped some paint on top. And then this one, they had uh, a lot of trouble on the on corrosion on the fenders. So uh, they set about patching that up. Only got half halfway through the job and then they had to move out and redeploy. You know how it is. So, what are we doing next? Okay, next bit. We're actually back with the pigments this time. And uh, these are these micro brushes. Um, I don't know where you get them from, but I've got still a couple of them left. So we said that we're going to keep everything in context in the story. So I'm going to do micro pigments. That's exactly what we're doing. And we already know that the vehicle's on operations and that the crew have been in and out of the hatches and also they've also had to go out and reload. So every time they go up and down into the crew compartments, they're going to bring dirt and dust with them. But that isn't going to be loads and loads. It isn't as if this vehicle has been covered in shit and then some of it's fallen off. It's just very small amounts of dirt and dust. So why don't we just add them around some of the hatches in very, very small quantities. So hence micro dust or pigment or whatever you want to call it, right? We can actually, you can do this with washers as well, but I'll show you how we do that later. So. We'll go for those recessed areas and we'll just do a little bit at the back there, like as if they sometimes have to go around the back and check out the auto loader, something like that. That is all, that is the only pigments we're going to add there. See, very, very small amounts. And then likewise, on the front of the vehicle, I'm going to add a little bit just sort of round here where your driver might be getting in and out with his dirty boots and also just a little bit as if his entry point would be the front of the hull and he's brought a bit of dust up with his boots so like as if you're foot stepping it up but you know under like dirty conditions you don't want to bring all this shit inside your vehicle but it does happen so there we go. Also, it's asymmetric. I haven't got anything over there, but I'll just I'll just put a little bit down here, a little bit just into that little corner down there. Also, this here, as if some of the mud has actually washed down on here and accumulated, just in those areas. So very very small amounts. Final area to do is. Um, well, conjecture, I, I like to do it. I like a little bit on my engine deck as well. Just as if the guys had to get out, you know, during the refueling operations, inspect the back deck, do the maintenance, and they've got a bit of shit on their shoes, or I shouldn't say that, should I? A bit of mud on their boots, and they've brought it up with them, and they've walked all over the back deck, and they've brought the mud up with them. And that is it. Except it isn't. That is that's the pigments laid down now. We know that they don't actually sit that well. Let's blend them in. That's the next bit. Okay, we'll make a little wash up. Um, just for convenience, I'm using the oil brushes because it is quick. So we're going to use earth shades. One of them's earth. All we need is a little dot. That's all we need. Then 
then we'll do some dark mod. There we go, we've got a filthy, dirty, earthy colour. Mix that together, just check the washer's consistency. And here's the magic part, I love this bit. Remember, the pigments act as a sponge to washers. So uh, all we need to do is just dot this on carefully into the pigments. And see how it all branches out and you get some lovely, lovely effect of Don't paint it on, just let it capillary out. So we aren't hitting the entire model. We're just adding in scale effects, if that's possible. There we go. I have to make sure I've used that matte, um, matte drying thinner for the wash which hopefully works so we want that to be matte. We've got the engine deck to do as well, we've got those little areas there in the back so we'll just hit them as well with the wash. Uh, you can add dark wash as well if you want to do oil and dirt combined um, make up a wash with the darker brownie black and then add that onto the dirt looks fantastic. I'll just add a little bit more out here as well, just a bit more wash. I missed a little bit of the front there. There we go. All sort of pulls out. When it dries, it looks sick. I'll show you. Crew hatches. See, I like doing this stuff because it's easy as well. Don't need to overkill everything. We don't need to. You see, I, I hear this all the time. People saying, oh, yeah, uh, mod is on the areas of the hatches. And then they just fucking throw mod over the entire fucking model. Oh, I'm swearing a lot today. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to tone down my language, be a bit more respectful. Put that in there. You can see it's all congealing. Looks good. Don't absolutely, you know, you're not going to have a mud bath up here. But you are going to have areas of dirt that they just, you know, <laughs> they can't clean up because uh, they're in operations. And that's it. I'll show you what that looks like when it dries. Okay, the pigments have had time to dry. Uh, we need to fade them out and blend them a little bit. You just do that when they're dry. Just take your brush. Just start pushing out the pigments to sort of fade them out. Like so. Get the idea. Get some nice little streaks. The idea is, of course, with these pigments as well. Um, you have to avoid touching these areas now because um, they're not permanent. They will, they will come off if you keep on basically handling the model. But we've only got limited quantities on the top, as we said, we want to keep. Uh, Realistic. I need to blend this other area here as well, just uh, by the driver's hatch. Let's push it out and fade it down. And that's all there is to it. You can keep going, you can actually go heavier if you want to. Uh... I like that, looks good, looks right. I, uh, I've spent a couple of hours actually doing bits and bits, touch up. As well, I've even gone back on. Uh, you know, I did the the paint repair. I went back and actually added on with a sponge um, a bit of paint wear again, because uh, that's what happens. You do these patch paints, and because you've painted on top of dirt, rust, whatever, it bubbles back through. So uh, that's the like third layer now on there. Um, I limited it though. Didn't go do it everywhere. Uh, the barrel as well got a similar treatment. It was also um, micro scratch with the with brush and then also I used a bit of sponge with some uh, black brown as well this this area of course is going to get 
are heavily abused when that 152mm round comes flying out the end. And um, I think at this point now, that's a good time for assembly. Uh, and then we can go on to some of these, uh, the very final effects. So I'm going to sort of get, start to get part of it together. I basically I'm going to glue on the side skirts and then we're going to do something else. Okay, fenders are attached. Looks pretty good. However, look at this point here where the weathering doesn't coincide. So you've got like this strange sort of junction here and also there's a bit of grey plastic there. So we'll tidy that up and uh, we'll just use um, a sponge paintbrush just to blend all that together and a bit more weather in there. That's all that we need to do. Okay, another discussion point before we move on to what I'll be doing next. Um, this is just dry fit of course on here, it'll click down later on. But um, for some reason, people don't do this that much. It used to be very popular. And that's dusting of the vehicle um, just with the um, like a dust colour and um, I think the you know the best way you can do it the most realistic way is with an airbrush but I'll just explain the way we'll do it we'll, we're going to hit uh, basically like a um, like a tide mark like a, a line where we go up to which is going to be just you know the very lower portion of the side skirts so don't lose all this camo detail obviously I have to spend a lot of time We'll hit the front of the vehicle with the light dusting as well, just going to go from that point down. And then at the rear, we will paint these separately, but the most dust is going to come at the back of the vehicle. Because when the vehicle's running, the dust gets churned up by the tracks, forms in big clouds and ends up on the back portion on here. So we'll spray up there as if it's going up and then not that much actually on the deck, a little very light dusting, but then quite a bit sort of comes at this angle and we'll hit this portion up here. So we'll spray this separately, but at an angle that represents that. So we're going to get on with that now. Okay, for the dust we're going to use road dust. Well, anyways, we thought it was a great colour from the slide colour. So we're going to airbrush this time. Um, and again, we'll dilute again because we want to do the thin layers, so we're going to go that 50-50 mix, so I'm going to make some up here, just a couple of drops is all we need. As we saw this stuff is pretty, um, well, not thick, but um, it should just airbrush better like this as well. What a nice milky, watery consistency, God, I mean that all those terms like water, whatever, anyways, what we'll do again is load in the airbrush and do a test spray to check the consistency. Uh, airbrush is noisy, sadly, as it is, but that's just... And I'm going to have to crank down the pressure as well, quite low. But first of all, let's get this loaded in. Get a piece of paper. And just fire it. Very transparent.
just one more thing. I'm going to go in with some neat uh, undiluted um, road. I'm just going to hit the very, very lowest extremity of this um, side skirt here because I want to do some streaks for you. And um, at the moment, I like the dust because it's very super subtle. But if I, um, I can show you what else we can do. With this stuff. We just need to let that dry and I'll come and show you the next bit. Okay, so we know that the remover removes the uh, acrylic liquid pigments. So in that case, we can add some streaky type effects if we are very subtle. The idea though is again, we don't want to like totally wipe this effect out. We just want to be super subtle. So we're going to use a damp, damp brush and just going to just blend in some streaks. I don't want to do too many. I just want a few, just like as if it's had a bit of a wash down. You can just see them super subtle. I'm going to hit it too much. That's the way I like it, just a suggestion that some of it's washed down, like super subtle. I'll show you that on close up there. Probably just see there, 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 that's all. We can really go to town with these effects on some other vehicles, on other, you know, um, projects rather. But on this case, we... Uh, I think this just looks right. It looks in tune with the references as well, where there was like an overall dusty sort of grey film. So I'm just doing some streaking random. You can even pull that way as well. There we go. Oh, I've got some nice ones there. I'll just show you that. See that? Super small, subtle as if it's um, brushed against something and some of the dust has come away from the vehicle. Yeah, you can do all sorts of stuff just by experimenting. But that's, um, that's about that. Right, okay, uh, let's get this together and then I think we've got the final effect and you're gonna love the final effect. Okay, if you can remember our reference picture, uh, one of the dominant effects was the exhaust with that. Um, incredible oily sludge coming out of it. We're going to build that up in um, a layer. Well, first of all, the first thing we did, if you look at the previous videos, we um, laid down oil effects just around that area of the exhaust. Now, this is pretty easy. All we're going to do is get some um, black smoke pigment, put it on a Q-tip and start dabbing it around the outlet. Pretty easy. Easy. Okay, this stuff is very powerful. You only need a little bit. Then we need to blend it. Streak it down. Get a 
a lovely smoky black effect. I need a micro brush to get inside that area there because I'm sure that area would be hit. So this is the second stage. You can see how you can streak it down as well. This stuff is incredibly strong. I want some more in that deepest recess, but I've got a plan for that anyway, so don't worry. Take the clean end as well. That's looking sick. Just a little bit around there. See if it sort of billows out when it starts. And a little bit on top as well. Just flick it back. There you go, that's the first. Oh, second stage, isn't it now? Second stage. Okay, now we're gonna do something else. Okay, we need to make some filth up. Ooh, 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 baby. Right, what we'll use, we use black and dark brown. It doesn't matter which oil paint um, you use. We're just using these oil brushes because they're extremely convenient. And um, it's gonna be quite a concentrated um, thickish wash, wash but it needs to be able to be brushable and controllable as well so we add some brown in as well and then the magic ingredient is the pigment to give it this um, texture this is going to be super slimy and it needs to be painted on very precisely as well so let's mix this up mix up the goo see how thick it is it is really like a paint I want it to run a little bit more than that so I'm going to add a drop of thinner and then I'll probably do a couple of layers as well and I think we'll go enamel thinner instead because it's going to dry just that bit quicker I don't know I don't think the effect is going to be um, glossy and I'm not really too bothered about that either because if we want to add that sort of sheen you can always do it later if you want to get rid of the sheen sometimes a little bit more difficult and I'm wondering also is my brush going to be Yeah, I might actually be a little bit too watery now, so let's just test consistency. Yeah, okay, that's a bit too, um, it's a bit too liquidy, but I'm going to start anyways, I'm going to start anyways as the first. streaks it came out on those really weird patterns I'm not following exactly I'm just gonna just sort of see what the hell happens here okay let's just do that and then do that okay now I need to let this dry and then I need to thicken up this mixed and get a very fine paintbrush to do the next step okay seeing that I fouled that up the first time let's try and have another go so pigment and just the oil paints now. And then the texture is, it's not bad actually. It looks fine enough to paint with. Yeah, I think I can, can I use this? Yeah, I think I'll use this brush as well. So we need to paint out these uh, lovely Concentrating, trying to make it look real. Not bad, not bad. Actually, looks pretty okay that. Just trying to 
feather some of this out. That looks pretty okay, actually. What do you think? I might feather out the ends. I want it more liquidy in appearance. So. Yeah, I quite like that. Don't do too much or else it's going to look a little sucko. Don't do too much. I want a more heavy, I want another concentration just underneath there, that's all. But that's it, that's the extent of the oil that drips out. If you're not happy with it, just get some turps and just kill it. Get on a dry brush now and just I'll feather that somehow. I wanted these like ultra thin. As if, yeah, that's working. You can see how it's pulled down now. Get nice and thin, streaky. Yeah, that was pretty sick. Not bad, not bad at all. I quite like that. I might just go back a little bit again with some um, pigment on top as well. Yeah, I just went back with the enamel thinner on the brush and just sort of faded out these lines, made them a little bit sharper. And uh, that's it. I don't think there's anything else, is there? There's something else. I know there is. Hold on. Oh yeah, I have to... Let's fit it all together. <laughs> First rule, clean your hands after you touch those pigments or else you get the pigments everywhere. And especially when we did this uh, dark crap that came out of the exhaust. So you don't want that everywhere. Um, I've already checked and actually can dry fit a lot of this anyways. Uh, the barrel is the first thing I want to fit in. And I did check. It's best off to do this... Um, It's quite a tight fit actually, but it does go in. And because it's tight, I think you can check from underneath. Everything gets heavy and awkward now. And also you get a bit nervous that bits fall off, but yeah, you can check underneath to see this is. Fit it all the way in. And I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm actually leave it just dry fitted because um, it's so big that if I want to transport the thing, I can probably take the barrel out and the turret off. Now I need to click in the turret. There she goes. And the barrel, oh God, look at that. I had to have a snap off, didn't I? I've snapped off that actuator for the front on the cradle, but we can fix it off with a bit of super glue. It's all part of the modern process. That fits in the cradle like so. I need to work on the crew, I need to fix that, but basically, I think we've got them to start together now. Yeah, looking pretty nice, looking pretty nice. Okay, so I need to just do repair, just make sure that all that is correctly fitted. So I'll check all that and then I'll come back to you. Now, you know, I, remember, I mentioned checklists. This is the reason why. I nearly forgot the MG, but I checked my checklist. Um, this just got a uh, light overcoat with metallic black. And uh, I'm going to dry fit that on there anyway, so it's no big deal. You know, just pull that off of there. Trim that off. And that guy, he can just sit on there. Or I might use some white glue for the MG. Not too sure. And another thing, let's pull off these masks. on the periscopes. They look pretty good. If you remember, we started the painting, we did all that prep work. I like it. I'm trying to show you how those periscopes turned out. Pretty good. It's a big beast. It's getting a little bit difficult to handle. I'm so glad I kept it in the sub-assemblies, really. Because um, it is a bit, a bit awkward to move around. 
But let's get the crew in now. Check, 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 check. Oh, what's this? The Linden Tribute. What the hell is that? Oh, yeah, I remember. Let's pay a bit of homage back to one of the masters, okay? This is uh, the old um, dry transfer sheet. Can you remember these guys? Back from the 80s or whenever? I don't know. Anyways, I noticed that on the, the vehicles, they actually had a, they had like had a center of gravity mark somewhere above out there and it must have been doing with the loading and these circles just sort of seem to fit the bill so uh, yeah let's uh, let's stick on some uh, Berlin and transfers that one fucked up let's leave it Try and get one good one. <laughs> Let's try and get one good one. Come on, you can do it. You know what you're meant to do is actually stick these on with a piece of tape and then uh, hit them. I think I can do this one. No, I haven't. I've, oh, that sucks, man. El Soco. Cut. That's what happens when you try to be a bit cocky and do a shortcut. So let's try and do this a little bit better using the prescribed method of attaching it with tape. It doesn't really matter where this goes exactly. Well, it does. It does matter where it goes. I just want to cock it up. I need that stuck on properly. Okay, there we go. Now, let's try and do this. I wonder how old these are. They must be from, like, the 80s. Maybe 90. 91. Okay, let's see if that worked. Yeah! Success! Check it. Looks so cool. What happens to dry transfers? Uh, archers still do dry transfers, but... Um... I'll tell you what, they look really good. I'm going to leave that one. Actually, that one looks okay. That one just looks okay. And I don't want to stick another one on, or else it's going to look weird. Okay, let's uh, do the final reveal. Well, you've already seen how many, and this is the final reveal. Let's um, just show you some cool shots of the vehicle. Uh, really hope you enjoyed um, this video series. And, uh, yeah, the Valinden thing, uh, that probably might tell you where we're going to go with this channel. We might be doing some retro builds, all sorts of weird stuff. Anyways, hope you've uh, gained something. Uh, please feedback. Please subscribe. I need more subscribers, guys. And like I said, the Patreon will be starting up as soon as I can do live videos. Okay, here's the finished result. Mm -hmm.